Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And uh, so we got another wine, obviously. Um, we'll just right, hop right into it so we don't uh, make this last too long. <laughs> um, we've got the Liberty School 2007 Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso Robles. Uh, now, this is a wine that was uh, given to us by a friend of ours. Oh, by the way, the, the other wine that I said was given to us by a friend... Um, no, I actually had bought that off of Cinderella. I think I bought it off his wine library, but I, uh, but the price was about the same that I had mentioned. Um, but I found the receipt a few weeks ago, a couple, of, a few days ago. I found the receipt in my email, so that's where I got it was from wine library. Anyway, so this was definitely given to us by a friend of ours, um, and it is uh, a Cabernet that uh, I don't know if it's, it doesn't say if it was one hundred percent Cabernet or not, but it could be. This is a um, winery that was started in 1978, or, or the, uh, the Hope family bought into this uh, winery, and they started growing grapes. Um, they became the supplier for Camus Vineyards. They were looking for a second label, and they created Liberty School, and this is the grapes that were from that. Well, not these grapes, but the, the uh, winery. Um, in 1976, they decided, the Hope family decided to become their own winery. They created a winery called Triana Winery, and they... And they took control of the Liberty School label, so now it's theirs. Uh, you can buy it off their website for $14, so that was the long-winded way to say how much it was. Um, and I'll have the link down below uh, to get to the winery. Uh, one thing though I noticed was that there is no vintage other than 2007 for this for sale, so I don't know if they don't have any older vintages available or the newer vintages if there is a newer vintage that's sold out. So I don't really understand about that. They have a 2006 Chardonnay uh, Liberty School. So either they haven't released any later vintages for those or they didn't make any or I don't know. But they have other wineries, they have other labels besides Liberty School. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Man, I can already smell it. So uh, let's, let's just delve right into it. Okay, so we've got rich chocolate in here uh, cherries berries uh, there's almost kind of like a creaminess to it which reminds me to tell you that it is aged for 12 months in French and American oak 10% which is new but they don't give you the breakdown of how much is French how much is American and, and, and of the new oak how much of each but uh, it is aged for 12 months but you get kind of like a a cherry or a um, raspberry type of pie aspect to it. So you're getting a little bit of uh, hints of cream and uh, or just that pie ness that that you know and, and, and the fruit uh, and, and also some chocolate. And I, I, I detect this slight bit of, of spiciness, but uh, let's see how it tastes. I like the nose, it's kind of neat. Okay, so this is one of those where the nose and the palate went like that. Not quite. There, there is a bit of, it's more subtle. 
I get kind of that fruitiness. Um, I get a little bit of the... Okay, so the, the flavor seems a little muted now. And I'm getting... <clears throat> I'm getting more of the spiciness. And I'm getting a little bit of the alcohol, but it's only 13 and a half. So it might be a little bit higher. Um, but I get more green out of it. Uh, more, more peppery type of stuff. Um... Yeah, I get more of a spiciness out of it. Not much on tannins. The tannins are actually fairly non-existent. Um, it's 2007, it's not really that old, but um, it's an easy drinking, well, easy. It, it's the body, it's not, it's not a full body, it's not really full body. It's kind of a medium body wine to me. So there's a little bit of thinness to it. You don't have a lot of, um, it doesn't really hit you in the face type of deal, but it tastes good and um, I don't think I'd have a hard time determining this was a Cabernet, but it's a to me it's kind of a light Cabernet. I want to taste it one more time because I got kind of that barbecue smokiness to it. Barbecue sauce type of thing. Getting okay, a little bit of spices. So I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to go. You know, I'm going to go 90 on this. Um, sorry, getting texts while we're doing this. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> traded text with a buddy of mine about NCAA basketball. He's a big Duke fan, and I said something about North Carolina and the, the NIT. So, um, it's kind of funny. Anyway, um, 90. I give it a 90. I think this is, you know, it's a really tasty wine. I think a lot of people will like it. I like it. It's I like it for my palate. It's not a complex, it's not really, it's not super complex. But it's got some it's got some different layers in there, and you've got the you've got the the contrasting bouquet and palette. So you're getting kind of that you get a little creaminess. Like I don't get like the the creaminess on, on the palette. It, it, it's slightly there, so you don't have like you know the the heavily oak influenced. So and that's that would come from the new oak more than the old oak. So they have the new oak to kind of give you that little bit, but uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Ninety solid about 14 bucks on the website you can probably find it around that price at most most regular retailers that have it and uh that's it so um friday's wine i haven't decided what that is because i'm actually down to my last bottle of wine as of today which is actually monday um probably gonna buy some more wine to tomorrow and uh do another review record another review tomorrow not tomorrow record another review, review this week for friday because actually my day job i'm working during the day friday so get some more wine. I haven't decided what I want to do with that. Uh, today is St. Patrick's Day, as far as this episode is concerned. So if you decide to go out, I don't like to go out on St. Patrick's Day because I am in the industry, and to me it's amateur night. Um, just like New Year's Eve is amateur night. Um, I'm not a fan of going out and dealing with a bunch of people that, that don't go out, except for once or twice a year. Um, but if you do go out, please be safe. Uh, make sure you get to you know get home safely and you don't do anything stupid um, and uh, you can get to work I'm working early in the morning on Thursday anyway so even if I did want to go and, and be stupid and, and, and be around people in places like that I wouldn't be out <clears throat> um, and even if I wasn't opening on that on that day I had to be at work early in the morning again I don't like going on St. Patrick's Day it's, it's just too crowded it's too it's it's it, I don't know People are really stupid on those days. Like dumb, like obnoxious dumb. Besides being stupid in other ways, just in the bars are just obnoxiously stupid. Um, that's gonna be it. Might get some, you know, might go like lunchtime and, and maybe do some traditional Irish stuff. Uh, social media breakfast, Wednesday morning at Egg and I. Oh yeah, this already happened, Never mind. <laughs> this video was already up by the time that's done. 
Uh, so I, I think I'm, I'm probably going to go to that. And what else? South by Southwest is done. And uh, I've been watching everybody on Twitter. Wish I was there. Oh, yes. Got my passport. And unfortunately, did not win the Explorador contest. Uh, somebody else did. Bottle Report, I believe is the name, and I congratulated him today. So uh, congratulations to Bottle Report, and uh, hopefully there'll be another contest next year. And hopefully I can meet Explorer Wine. They're actually up in Austin at the at South by Southwest, but hopefully someday I can meet them. That's going to be it, and we'll see everybody again on Friday.